reflected in your life when you obey these two commands of God. And it's something simple. It's something that we need to memorize, that we need to be able to, to keep with us and to be able to keep on our minds and hearts. So if you're over at Mark chapter 12, verse 30, if you always stand with me, honor, reverence, reading God's Word. I'm telling you today that one of the most important things we can do is reverence God's Word. Respect it and treat it with respect and treat it as holy. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you, God, that you have given us your word to help guide us and lead us. Help us tonight, Lord, not to leave here sad, not to leave here beat down, but leave here rejoicing, rejoicing in the promises that obedience to you, Lord, hold for us. Father, help us to have the strength and the wisdom to be obedient to you. Help us in the times of weakness, God, when our flesh wants to overtake us, when the world attacks us. Lord God, when we're tempted or when we're tested, help us to be obedient to you in every time of our life, every part of our life. And Lord, at the times you know that we, Lord, will sin and disobey you, we pray, God, that you'd help us to quickly turn back to you, Lord. Convict our hearts and, and really help us to repent and just ask forgiveness and get back on the path, Lord, that straight and narrow path you have for us. God, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all may be seated tonight. It is, it is with great joy that I just stand before you tonight and just read the Word of God. Just read the Word of God and just look at the Word of God. And just like this morning, whenever you look at this morning and you, you look at what went on this morning, I'm, I'm telling you right now, as a preacher and as somebody, um, whenever you preach, whenever you've talked for a while, whenever you've been around the Word of God for a while, when you see, it, you know, when you hear it getting so quiet in there that you can hear a pin drop, man, when you... When you see people getting still and you see people's face and they're not moving around much and everybody gets quiet and it's just kind of a holy hush comes over, you know God's really dealing with people. So when we talked about this morning, you know, how disobedience, how it, it can be so destructive in your life and how that the blessings of God come with obedience. I want to tell you something. When you think about the destructiveness of disobedience, if you're being disobedient and you hear those words that were spoken this morning, then they could really get on top of you. They could really convict you. And, you know, they can, they can really just take and, and get you in a place to where if you know when you leave this church, you're not going to be obedient when you leave. It really depresses you. You say, well, Brother Greg, how, how do you know that? Well, when you look at um, this rich young man that came up to Jesus Christ and, you know, he talked about how, you know, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to follow you? What do I need to do to be right with God? I want to be a follower of God. I want to be a follower of you. What do I need to do? And, and God told him, he said, you know, he was rich. He said, just go and sell all you have and give it to the poor. And guess what? He walked away grieved. You know why he walked away grieved? It wasn't because God had gave him the command and Christ had gave him the command to sell all he had and give to the poor. It wasn't because he couldn't have obtained what he came there asking Christ for. It was because he knew when he heard those words he wasn't going to obey them. He knew that he was not going to give up those things in his life. And so when you decide to be disobedient to God, and that's a decided way that you're going to live, it is very depressing to be around the Word of God and the people of God. I mean, really, it's really hard for people that are outside the will of God to come to church. It's really hard for people that are outside the will of God to open the Bible because every time they do it, they know they're going to be convicted. Every time they're at work and they see somebody living right or they see somebody sitting there reading the Word of God and, and you got a, maybe a wayward child that's, that's walked off and went out in rebellion and, and left the church and left God and, and left you in your home and just went out there... When they get at work and they see somebody living right, they see somebody reading the Word of God, it really gets on top of them. It's really convicting to them. But I'm going to tell you something great tonight, something really great tonight, something really positive tonight, that the people in here, like what you see tonight, most of are you know, you're trying to be obedient to God. You're trying to live for God. You want to be faithful in serving God, being at church, reading the Word of God. Just as depressing as that probably was to them this morning, that is so positive to me and you tonight. Because when you look at the, um, the things that we got to tackle and we got to take on as a church and as a believers and people that live in the day and time we live, man, it's great obstacles. But the thing you've got to understand about the word that God gave us this morning and the word that God gave us over there in Mark and uh, over there in Matthew where it's at Matthew and here when you read in Proverbs and you hear God just speaking uh, to us about being faithful and obedient, what it'll do for us. That is the thing we need tonight. 
There's a blessing with being obedient to God. That's the title of the sermon now, the blessing of obedience. Just like this morning we're talking about, you know, the destruction that disobedience brings, there's a blessing that comes with being obedient to God. And when we were at the marriage uh, seminar thing this weekend, you know, I just went there to eat and get Shay straightened out. You know what I'm saying tonight? Uh, boy, I'm getting some good amens on that tonight. <laughs> but while we were there, he spoke to one of the five basic needs that he called them that a, a wife has. One of the five basic needs that he said that a wife needs, and Shay affirmed this, you know, too, was that they need to have security. That security with women was a big issue. You know, knowing the bills were paid, knowing you're going to be there and be faithful, knowing, you know, just that the security of that, and just knowing they're going to be okay. Well, I, I want to read you a definition tonight. I, I just really think it's kind of powerful tonight, and um, it really blessed my heart, and really blessed to bless somebody. You know, we, we talk about how we want to be blessed by God. And we talk about the blessings of God. But I want you to understand the definition of the bless, what it means to bless somebody. Listen to what it means. It means to invoke divine care for them. So what I'm talking about today, what I've been really focused on, I felt like God's led me to today. I want to talk about being obedient to God. You know, as a child of God, especially to you ladies out there, which security is so important. And in, in reality, us guys, you know, we want the security too. We want to know things are going to be all right. We want to be able to tell you that things are going to be all right. That's what we want to be able to do. We, we want to be able to help that to happen. But listen, invoke divine care for us. So one of the promises of obedience to God that, that is one of the greatest to me is that you put yourself in a place like Warren Wiersbe talked about this morning that when you're obedient, to God, it puts you in a place where God can bless you and God can take the plans he has for you and put them to work in your life and, and just like really, you know, um, like a, a, in Malachi we're talking about just open up the windows of heaven and just pouring it out upon you. You know, whenever you get in a place of obedience with God and you get in the will of God, then it, what God has said when he says he'll bless you is that he's going to care for you. It means to invoke divine care for you. It means that God's going to take care of you. It means that you can have the peace in your heart of knowing that it's going to be okay. Think about what Paul said about dying. He said to live as Christ. In other words, when you live the godly life and you pour your life out into other people in the name of Christ, to live as Christ, but to die is what? See, he very much understood that when he had taken and turned his life away from the religion and, and the the wrong way of thinking he had in the persecution of the church of Jesus Christ and he turned himself on that road to Damascus when God called him and Jesus Christ called him and he turned away from his sin which may not have looked like some of ours but it was sin he turned away from his sin and turned to God he knew that no matter what went on in his life it was going to be okay that's why he could endure shipwreck he could endure being beat he could endure being hungry he could endure being naked he could endure perils and, and obstacles and hardships and know in his heart that he could be aggressive in serving God and just just really just give all he had, his whole heart to serving God because he knew that when he turned his life over to God and when he was being obedient to God that one of the most important things there is the security of our hearts and our minds and our souls, that it was in God's hands and when you put your life when you put your plans, when you put your future when you put your present, when you put your family, when you put your financial security in the hands of God, you can be assured that it's going to be okay because when God blesses you, he invokes divine care for you. And so when you get the blessings of God, it not only brings you peace in your heart, but it brings security to your life. Amen? I'm just telling you tonight. I'm telling you. The song service was just so perfect. You know, write it on my heart. Write your words upon my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, God. So that I can see you because when you see God and you see the immensity of, of, of just his power and his strength and you understand that that God that has, you know, just, just no limit on his power, no limit on his strength, no limit on who, what he sees, it, then you understand that the God that promises you that is that same God. And when you see who God is and you see 
on what he's promised and you can get that God can keep his promise. I can tell my wife, I can tell my kids, it's going to be okay because I'm going to always take care of you. Well, I, I mean, I might not be able to keep that promise. I might die tomorrow and they live on for 50 more years. You know? But I'm just telling you, God can keep it. God, when he tells you I can take care of you, if you will listen to me, if you will follow me, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to take care of you. Then he can keep his promise. And you know, as a father, he can keep his promise. Your father in heaven, he's going to keep his promise. So tonight, when you think about your security, your security depends upon your obedience to God. Because when you are obedient to God, you are walking in the will and you are um, being carried in the hand of God. I'm telling you, these verses tonight are just electric. They are electric. When you look at verse 1, it says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. We talked a lot about it this morning. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. Now when you look at verse 2, it's talking about longevity and prosperity. The Hebrew word is salam, and it's often translated peace. It's often translated peace. And so when you look at it, the promise of peace there, when you follow God, when you listen to God, when you keep his commandments, Listen to what this word, the overall word means. It is so good. It means wholeness. It means health. And it means harmony. You think about those three things. You think about if you, if you told somebody with a billion dollars, hey, I can promise you wholeness. I can promise you health. I can promise you peace. And harmony with God. They, I mean, they give almost anything to have it. We would sacrifice so much for our home just to be at peace. If you don't think so, you've never been in a home where a child has went crazy. Or where one of the spouses has went crazy. And, and, and just went off on the deep end. Or when there is dissension in your home. I remember one story the guy told was, there's a little kid, true story, he wrote down like five things he wanted, if, you know, they had like a wish list, anything they could have, I think the first thing was like a bike, the second thing was uh, Oakley helmet for the bike, the other thing was some shoes or something for the bike, he, he was in the bike. But the fifth thing he said was for my mom and dad to get along. And not to fight. You understand that not only do parents want peace in their home, your children want peace in your home. You say, well, how can you have peace in your home? Well, when everybody is obedient to God, it takes care of itself. You can work it out. When you walk in the Spirit and you allow the Spirit of God to fill you and to dictate what you say and what you do and how you handle things, then everybody, no matter how big the problem is, can get it worked out. But man, when you walk in your flesh and the selfishness like our Sunday school lesson talked about this morning, the selfishness of our flesh and when it's about us, it's all never going to be right. There's no way to get it right. So you have to have that help from God. And so when everybody is on board with following God and obedient to God, you can have peace in your home. You know, whenever you talk about peace in our community, if every person in our community followed God and the commands of God, we would have peace in our community. You know that most of one of the biggest marks of revival in all the years past, the greatest revival has ever been, there have been revivals, listen to me now, when the court did not have to open for a month because there were no cases. Now, could you imagine that? Hey, hey, how many people have ever been to court and like, sat on a jury or whatever? Now, if you went last week because you got locked up, you ain't got to raise your hand, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. There... <laughs> I'm telling you, like, there was this accident thing happening. I was just a witness. And so this guy, I got called as a witness. And so I sat there all day. And you know what? I was there that morning in some kind of way. I don't know how it all normally works. But it was like, you know, you didn't know exactly when it was coming up. But we were the last case of the whole day. So I sat there and watched court all day long. You know, I've been like a character witness or being called as like a witness. And sometimes in, like, domestic things or things like that, being a pastor, you get... Sometimes when you know people, you know, you get called on to do that. There's all kinds of things as a pastor you just see and do that really people don't understand how adventurous some of it is and the things you get to see. But um, 
So I'm sitting there all day, and I see all these court cases. And, I mean, we have so many court cases in our country, they can't hardly fit them in. We have so many people, listen to me today, that, that are being convicted of crime that we don't have a place to put them. I mean, that's the reality of why some people don't get no longer than they do. I mean, because we don't have no place to put them. But just listen to me tonight. There have been revivals to where they didn't have court cases for weeks. That the court just shut down because there wasn't a case. See, that's the, what the power of God does when people are being obedient to God. If everybody in our community followed the commands of God, you wouldn't have to worry about thieving. You wouldn't have to worry about adultery. You know what? You, you hear what I'm saying today. You wouldn't have to worry about killing. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, think about what it would eliminate, obedience of God. Think about the peace it would bring to our community if people were just obedient to the commands of God. And, and listen, think about our country. Think about if the people in our country, even just the majority of the people in our country were obedient to God. You think about what kind of leaders we get elected in our country. You think about what kind of light we would shed on the world. We've seen in the past what America has done when she's been right with God. One of the great people from Europe came over here to look to see what was going on in America, why America was doing so great. And he said that their pulpits were on, were on fire, that they were preaching the word of God and their churches was on fire. And the things that made them great, America great, was that she was good and godly. And you know what? When America ceased to be good and godly, and the word of God quit being the absolute truth that set the standard in our country, then you can see that our peace is gone. I'm telling you, there's a direct link between your peace and your obedience to God. And so the great thing tonight that is so encouraging to me is that when I look at the word of God and I think about the peace that God wants to bring, it brings wholeness to my life. It brings health to my life. It brings harmony to my life. That is what we seek and we long for, isn't it? And it comes with obedience to God. So if you're being obedient to God tonight, that has to be encouraging to you. That has to uplift you tonight. Look at verse 3. Look at what it says. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about your neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. You know, John MacArthur said it is the virtues of mercy. The Hebrew word for loving kindness and loyal love. It's the Hebrew word for loving kindness and loyal love. And truth that comes from God are to become a part of us. They're to become a part of us. The truth of the word of God is not just to become a knowledge we have, but a part of us. What God wants is his word to become a part of us. You know the great thing about learning the word of God? is that when you learn the Word of God and you, you see the world through the lens of the world, uh, Word of God, it helps you to understand things rightly. It helps you to do right. It helps you to make wise decisions. It helps you to discern between good and evil what's right and wrong. That's all done through the Word of God, but listen to me. It's got to become a part of you. It's not only got to become a part of what you do, but a part of the way you think. It's really got to become what you think and how you think about things. Well, Brother Greg, what do you think about this? When I answer people, one of the things I try to do, try my best to do, my dead level best, I'm serious. Somebody asks me a question, I try to give them the word of God. I try not to give them my opinion. Now, if they ask, well, what's your opinion on this? I'll give them my opinion if they ask me, what's your opinion? If they ask me about uh, something and they want to know what God says about it, I try to give them the word of God. And you say, well, what's the best commentary on the Word of God? The Word of God. Go look up the Word of God, the same subject, in two or three places. But let it become a part of you, who you are. Uh, you know, people will say, look, there's a godly person. They try to do things biblically. That's one of the greatest compliments people can give you, is they try to do things biblically. But you know, you cannot do things biblically until you understand what the Bible says. You can't follow the commands of your Heavenly Father unless you're listening to your father. And you know what your father wants you to do. And that's one of the things this guy, and man, I had a great time this weekend, I'm just here to tell you. The guy was a hunting guy, had his own show for years. His wife killed like a 17-point buck. He said she killed the biggest buck out of all their whole family, him and his boys, all the hunting they ever done. He said that she took all their manhood in their whole family when she did it. Now, some of y'all in here know how that feels. But, but listen, 
I'm telling you, one of the things he said was, and he told the women and the ladies was, and I was like, amen. I didn't really say it out loud, but I was like, amen. He said, now, ladies, and, and his wife kind of said this mostly, and he kind of echoed it, but they said, now, ladies, your husband cannot know how you feel without you telling him. You know, because a lot of times as women, you think, well, now, if he really loved me, he'd know how I feel. If he really loved me, he'd, under, he'd get that. He'd know he needed to do this or do that. Have you ever gotten in trouble as a guy for something you never did? Like you should, yeah, look at Jay back there. He's got two hands up. I, I love that, Jay. You'll pay for that later, man, I know. I can see that look on Candy's face. <laughs> but, but listen, you know, as guys, sometimes we understand how that feels. Ladies will say, like, you should have known that because you love me. Or you should have Man, we can't know unless they tell us. I mean, literally, you know, we can't read minds. It's the same way with the Word of God. You know, you can't know what God wants you to do unless you listen to Him, unless you look at His Word. But the great thing is, when you figure out His Word, and it, man, is it worth enough for you tonight to dig into it? And if you're digging into it already, praise God, man, praise God. Because listen to me, when you go to applying it to your life, and you get real with God, and you're trying to really live for God, then you know that the blessing of obedience is going to come. You know that when you follow the commands of God in a situation, that God is going to be right there in the midst of it, and God is going to provide the way. Listen, one of the things it says in these verses that follow on down through verse 8, listen to me, is that when God sends you and gives you wisdom to do something and makes a way for you to go, He not only goes with you, He not only gives you the guidance in what direction to go, but He clears the path. He makes the way for you to be able to walk and follow Him. And it's like a smooth road. That doesn't mean everything's going to be smooth, but it just feels that way. Think about dirt roads. How many people walk, drove down a dirt road? I, my shocks were about gone on my truck. I just had them replaced. When I went down a dirt road, guess what? I felt every bump. I mean, every bump. But you know what? When them shocks are good, you know what the shocks do? They take out a lot of the roughness. They smooth out the ride. Man, your wheels, if you were watching from the side, are just beating like that a lot of times. Man, some of y'all got terrible dirt roads. I've been to your house. Amen? Amen. I mean, honestly, I'm glad to have a four-wheel drive. I'm glad to have a four-wheel drive because sometimes some of those roads are rough. And you know them old washboard ones. Boop, 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 boop. You know? And it's like the faster you drive, sometimes the smoother it feels. Maybe rough on your vehicle. But listen, those shocks help smooth out a rough road. That's what God can do. God can, it may be rocking and rolling up around you, but God can help it feel so much smoother because of his power and his strength and his comfort. Jesus said that when he left, he was going to leave, that, you know, he was going to a place that we could come to, but he was making a place for us. But we, they couldn't go right then, but what he told them, he said, listen, when I leave, he said, I'll send a comforter. He sent the Holy Spirit of God to comfort us. That's what it means. I mean, God will take, and make the way. He will clear the path tonight. You say, well, how am I going to do that? How can I make it? How can I do that? Because God, when you take that first step of faith and you walk in obedience, then you're in a place of blessing where God can take and just pour it loose in your life. But you've got to take that step. You've got to be following Him. You've got to be obedient to Him tonight. But I, I just really wanted to take tonight and really just kind of encourage you and just let you know just how these verses right here, these words in Proverbs 3, whenever you think about what God has said, are so encouraging for us tonight when we're trying to serve God and being obedient to Him. And it brings so much security to your life. You say, well, and we're going to get on down there in, in a little while, but you say, well, Brother Greg, how can following God bring you physical health? You know, how many people in here this week read the Word of God every day this week? Okay, we got Miss Mary and Miss Nellie here. I, if, if it helps give you physical strength, if I ask them to come out and do 100 push-ups, y'all going to be able to do it because you read the Word of God? No. It doesn't mean it physically is actually making you stronger, but listen, listen. What is one of the worst things on your health? Stress. Now, I know the younger ones won't get in here, but I, some of y'all have seen it. You remember Fred Sanford? Oh, Elizabeth, I'm coming to see you. <laughs> Come on now, my daddy loved that show. <laughs> you 
You know, you say, man, if you don't quit, you're going to give me a stress, right? Stress. What God's saying tonight, you be obedient to me. I'm going to bless you. And to bless me to invoke divine care for you. Say, if you're going to be obedient to me, you're going to do your part, what I've asked you to do. He's like, you don't worry, because I'm going to take care of the rest. You don't worry tonight. Because when you follow God, listen to me, church, God's going to take care of the rest. God's going to take care of the rest. Daniel went down in the lion's den. Guess what God did? Daniel was obedient and prayed to him. What did God do? Took care of the rest. When the, peach, when the children of God and when the Israelites followed Moses to go to the promised land, and when they went across the Red Sea, what did God do? He took care of the rest. When they didn't have nothing to eat out there in the desert, what did God do? He took care of the rest. When they didn't have anything to drink, what did God do? He took care of the rest. You know, and, and God loved us the same as he loved them, all of those people. And there's so many more examples I could call out to you tonight where when they trusted God and they were obedient to God, you can see they just had an inner strength and a faith because they knew that God was going to do what? Take care of the rest. So just be obedient to God tonight if you're already doing that. Leave here with joy in your heart, knowing that God's going to take care of the rest. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask you tonight to just do something a little bit different in our prayer time, not nothing big or fancy. I just want us to come tonight. If you're able to, just come down around this altar. And I just want us to thank God tonight. I just want it to be a time of prayer. You know, if you're unsaved in here tonight or you need to be prayed for for something else, you know this altar is always open. If God's dealing with you about salvation, always open. But I want you to come tonight, and I want us just to take tonight the time and just this be a prayer time of thanksgiving tonight. Well, we just thank God because I'm telling you tonight, you're so blessed. You're so blessed by God. I'm so thankful for your obedience to God tonight, but I'm telling you, we're so blessed that our Heavenly Father loves us the way He does. And all the things that He does for us, the help, the strength you got tonight. You know, your kids being okay, your grandkids being all right, Think about all the things God has done for you. All of us in here today sat down and ate a meal today. There's a lot of things for us to be thankful for tonight. So I just want us to take the time tonight as a home place. Just get up and come as you feel led. But let's just take the time. If you can't get up and come down here, you can pray right where you're at. And let's just thank God tonight for what he's done for us. Let's stand together tonight.